a growing number of Britons are opting out of the workforce. New figures from the Office for National Statistics reveal 9.5 million people aged 16 to 64 were economically inactive between April and June. That's the highest level since 2011. Over 2.8 million of these individuals are out of work due to long-term sickness. This surge in economic inactivity is a major challenge for the government as it seeks to boost economic growth. Well, the UK's labour market is sending mixed signals. While the unemployment rate has unexpectedly dropped to 4.2%, wage growth is slowing down. Regular pay increases have slipped to 5.4% from 5.8% in the previous quarter. Moreover, the number of job vacancies is declining. This suggests a tightening labour market despite a falling unemployment rate. The Bank of England may be encouraged to cut interest rates as wage growth eases, but the overall picture remains complex. Experts suggest that immigration could potentially play a role in filling labour shortages, but the issue remains a politically charged one. Labour's Rachel Reeves has called for more support to get people back to work, promising to address the issue in her upcoming budget. The government, however, points to falling unemployment as evidence of its success. As the economy faces challenges, both sides are under pressure to deliver solutions. Well, joining us now is Jonathan List, Deputy Director of the think tank British Influence and a journalist. Jonathan, many thanks for joining us. Concerning figures, really, for Rachel Reeves and the new government, of course, their big ambition to grow the economy, yet we're seeing record numbers out of work. Give us your assessment. I think that there are many reasons why we have uh, figures uh, at the rising of people who are out of work. Uh, I think that a lot of people on the right would like to depict that as people being feckless or lazy or work shy, words that we've heard in British political discourse for many decades. But actually, the truth is that there are lots of people who are sick. Um, there are a lot of people who uh, became sick during COVID uh, and never recovered. And it's very difficult to get benefits actually in Britain. So there's a myth that we have in Britain that it's you just turn up to the doctor and say, I'm sick. And suddenly you can sort of live in a castle for the rest of your life without working again. That simply is not true. It's not enough to live on and for most of the benefits um, that people are given. And of course, you also have um, a lot of rising stresses uh, in life. And that is also um, feeding uh, illness. And of course, you also have a number of students. Um, who are you know, an increasing number of students in this country, and that adds to the figures as well. But of course, we do also need migrants uh, to fill the labour shortages in this country, and that's why it's vitally important um, that we have an attractive uh, marketplace for people to come and abandon this idea of a hostile environment uh, which came in under the Conservative government, which basically treated migrants as invaders rather than the people who are keeping our economy afloat. Absolutely. And Jonathan, what's your assessment about what the new Labour government potentially may do to solve this issue? Because clearly, I appreciate you're saying there's a lot of people genuinely off work for genuine reasons, but... It, there are obviously a number in the economy perhaps who aren't. And what is Labour's tactic? What is Labour's strategy to try and encourage more people back into the workplace from um, those domestic here without turning to immigration? Well, obviously, um, if people can work and want to work, um, they should be given all the tools necessary to be able to do so. I've always believed more in a carrot approach than a stick approach. Um, for example, the idea that was mooted before of withdrawing people's benefits is not going to help anyone if it just forces more people into destitution. And let's not forget, a lot of these people who are not working, who perhaps could work, who are on benefits, also have children. And so in punishing them, you're also punishing children who have no agency or power whatsoever. So obviously there need to be schemes and sort of you know, re-employment schemes, re-education schemes uh, across the country for, for people who uh, may have had jobs that no longer exist. I mean, we know that there is a deindustrialization that's happened in Britain, but in general, the government needs to focus on growing the economy, uh, increasing productivity. That means investment, spending, rather than the early signs of austerity 
which uh, Rachel Reeves signalled a couple of weeks ago, which will not be good for the economy at all.